some cyber truck news because I haven't talked about it in a little bit, but obviously people are still talking about it because it's just, well, look at it. You got to talk about it when it looks like that. I did put in the pre-order, which is not really a pre-order because mm -hmm. what, did, what did I give them? A hundred dollars or something? You sure did. Was it a hundred dollars? Yes. It wasn't even a thousand. It was a hundred. Uh -huh. I mean, you could just do that just in case. Like yeah. you might want a cyber truck. Uh huh. It's funny, you're putting a hundred dollars, but you pick like I picked the triple motor. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's a hundred dollars if you're getting uh the entry level or the max, it doesn't matter. Well, they're changing it to starting the production to the triple motor. Yeah, they got a lot of interest in that one. So anyway, whatever. It's exciting, it's interesting. But this this news here I thought was worthwhile to talk about because it, a lot of people had these questions when they first spotted the Cybertruck. They were saying, where are the mirrors? It's made out of steel. What's going on here? And sure, some of the initial... There, there, there were answers to some of those questions. Most of them indicating that this was just an early version and that all that stuff was going to be sorted out. Mm -hmm. Elon's going to sort yeah, it we'll, out. We'll figure it out later. I mean, Don't worry about it. SpaceX, he's going to sort it out. Mirrors, can't figure out mirrors? Electric vehicles, sort it out. This is the future. Future, man. Yeah, look, look at that. I sorted it out. That cyber truck right there on Instagram. That, I mean, I nailed it. <laughs> For those that don't know, by the way, that was that's a punked phone. Yes. And some ear tips from some earbuds, so... Don't you ever say we're not creative around here. How dare you? It's uncanny. So this news is down the same line of thinking that this thing is not ready for prime time. That it's going to need substantial modifications, particularly if it's ever going to be sold in Europe. Because Europe has far more restrictions. At least that's what this article seems to indicate when it comes to vehicle designs, the construction, that whatever they're made out of. They have like, you know how it is in Europe. You got agencies for the agencies. You understand? In the government. Is it? Yeah, you got a government for the government in all of Europe. It's a lot of rules. Yeah, the European fans, they can fill it in right there. They can they can let you know, Will, how that goes. Okay. They got they got prime min they got a prime minister for the prime minister. Uh. Over there. You would do well over there, Will. Guy like you. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, so in Europe, yes, there's some there's various regulation in place and agencies responsible for testing these vehicles uh, to, to meet a particular standard. And to start with, the render that you're looking at right there was something that someone put together in order to showcase how the vehicle might look to meet U.S. regulation. So you have some tiny little mirrors there. And what else did they add to it? Uh, smaller tires, headlight clusters. Windshield wipers. Those pesky windshield wipers. Mm. Sort of ruining designs. Get them every time. Every time. Just ruining my cy the cyberness of my truck. Mm. It's less cyber now. Yeah. I mean, it's autonomous anyway, so what do I need to see the road for? That's a good point. <laughs> if it starts raining, I just go into rain mode, at which point it just takes over. Mm hmm you see how that goes, Will. So pesky windshield wipers. So this one is like, okay, we can do that. That's obviously what the eventual product's going to look like. It's going to have to have some more stuff on it. But this uh, industry safety expert, Stefan Teller, says that it's going to be far stricter in Europe. And he doesn't think, he thinks it's going to completely flunk the standards in Europe because of the construction. Now, many are disputing this, I should say to be clear that this is not necessarily everyone's opinion that this will take place, but he, he is suggesting that because they're using this rigid steel, which they showcase, they're slamming the steel in the, in the event, one of the restrictions they have in Europe, because it's a lot tighter environments and you have a ton of pedestrians, is that not only should a vehicle crumple if it bumps into another vehicle, but it should also do a little crumpling, even potentially if it hits a pedestrian. It should crumple a little, or at least give a little bit. Mm -hmm. you, what is a Cybertruck going to do to a pedestrian? 
You think Cybertruck cares about pedestrians? You probably won't even. It's like when it's like if you hit a squirrel or something. You don't even feel it. Turns everything into a pancake. Yes, that's just how it goes. It's just like the video you showed off, the Grand Theft Auto mod with the Cybertruck, just just picking things off. So the speculation on behalf of this particular expert uh, is that the material itself is going to be the issue, the construction material and its inability to meet the standard. But there is a counter to that where some people are saying that Tesla won't go forward with the hood portion being made out of the same material and that there might be a crumple zone where there's some, some softer materials at the front, even though the frame or most of it is going to be out of this super strong steel. Uh, and the same is, and, and you, oh, you also have a frunk there. So there is potentially a cavity in the front, which could crumple because there's nothing in there. There's no engine or anything. So it's possible. And, and of course, people care about this because you know how people try to ch tr uh, project the trajectory of Tesla, how successful they're going to be and so forth. They want to know investors and things like this. So this news is important to people to say hey is this thing going to be available in europe but i'm just going to complete the story here and tell you that europeans for the most part they're not buying f-150s mm. if you know what i'm saying very popular vehicles here in north america you got a little space you get out on the freeway got a little space uh -huh. you drive like this <laughs> you ever been to north america before you drive like this yeah. and you got your big gulp and you, yeah. you know, yeah. you, you go to Europe. You ever been to Europe, Will? No. Yeah, I well, I'll tell you, if when you go, you'll be on the tight streets. Pedestrians, yeah. everyone's on bikes. It's, it's a cool vibe, unless you're an F-150. Right. The vibe is not as cool. So it's, just, you know, smaller cars and things like this. So Cybertruck in Europe is even crazier than a Cybertruck. It's already, it's a big thing. I know people in Europe are going to want it, though. And, of course, Europe is big. Some parts of Europe, they probably want trucks. Other parts, maybe not so much. You get to the old city streets. Yeah, you're in Paris or whatever. It's getting tight. With the roundabouts. Well, you're getting into the roundabouts. Uh. With the no lanes. That famous part of Paris. Been through it a couple times. Uh. Every man you for take himself. take all the lanes. I, maybe you want a cyber truck there, to be fair. Uh. Get out my way on the roundabout. I'm made out of stainless steel. Get your horse and carriage out of my way. You just stay in the roundabout. Do I know something about carriages, out? Will? If you sure. were really wealthy back in the old olden days, yeah. all right, you were a wealthy dude, what color would your carriage be? Willie, do it on the me, spot. 2019. Me, I would probably say gold, right? Willie, do 2019 <laughs> coming at you. Time to be alive. He's 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 googling. He feels much more comfortable googling. Show off a carriage for us, real quick. Yeah, uh, your carriage will one. be your carriage will be white, Willie. Do your carriage will be white if you were affluent. Well, this one has gold. It's no, your carriage would be white, and let me tell you why. Because if you're a real gangster in eighteen whatever, eighteen hundred whatever, you. Are driving, you're going through these roads on your daily business, and they're dirt roads. It's not paved. You understand that? It's okay. a mess. It's okay. disgusting. So why are you gonna want a white carriage, Will? I, I don't know. Why are you gonna want a white carriage <laughs> in the dirty street? Why are you reaching for your coffee right now? Uh, I guess for I don't know people to see you. I'm not too sure. You want a white carriage in a dirty street because nobody that that is out there on that dirty street wants to have a white carriage. Nobody else would dare have it because they're going to say it's going to be disgusting. But you are such a gangster. So I'm flaunting. No, you're such a gangster that you got a staff, sir. And if that speck of dirt gets on there, it ain't no problem for you personally because you're gonna pull that baby into the driveway there you're gonna pull that carriage in and it's gonna be wiped clean before you're ready to go again 
So if you're out on those dirty roads with the white carriage, you're basically telling people, I got 50 people waiting to clean this baby because you're seeing it clean right now, and it's dirty out here. I see. All right? <laughs> Thank you for the information. I'm just saying if it was really you. Enlightening. I mean, I might do things differently, but a guy like, guy like you, you got to let people know. Well, what color would you choose? We're not talking about me today. <laughs> We're not talking about me today. Thieves stole 115,000 worth of iPhones from a customer's car at Bridgeport Village. Well, I want you to take a I want you to take a look at that headline. Wait a sec. What? Okay, no, they didn't steal. Okay, 115,000. Okay, a lot of iPhones. Uh Okay, they didn't steal it from the store. They stole they stole it from a car. What did he do? You're the math guy around here, aren't you? Some would say. You're the math guy around here. <laughs> I mean, everyone uses Mac. No, you're the math me. guy around here. How much is an iPhone Oh, cost? math. Math. I thought you said Mac. Oh, Mac. Yeah. Well, you're both math and yeah. Mac. Yeah. You're the math guy. How much is an iPhone going to cost you? Is it maybe a thousand bucks or something like that for a nice iPhone? Okay, 115, 115 iPhones in a car. Hmm. <laughs> Go on. What, what do you want me to say? <laughs> if that's your car, that's car. <laughs> I'm just trying to tell you I'm skeptical. I don't understand this story. The story is it well, is it seems very straightforward, okay? This car gets robbed in in a parking lot of a mall or a, a shopping district. Yeah. Okay, that happens. Maybe inside the car the person bought a couple of iPhones. Well, couple yeah 115 yeah. iphones will yeah so now you're starting to say to yourself well somebody knew obviously somebody knew and you scroll through the thing and you see some images of the the supposed or alleged perpetrators and apparently they were following this person around the store but the person goes to the store somehow buys 115,000 in iphones so 115 iphones likely on multiple credit cards, loads them into the car and then leaves? Hmm. Willie, do you think there's more to this story? Those two, the potential perpetrators, then approach the car. The guy on the left supposedly, again, allegedly, smashes the window and removes the $115,000, removes 115 iPhones out the window while the person that owns the car is back inside the mall. Mm. Or back in inside the shopping district, some sort of a co-op situation. Is, hey, you said it. I didn't some say sort that. Of heist. You said that. I didn't say it. Yeah. What is it? An insurance scam? A credit card scam? I don't know what it is. I can't figure it out. But the way that the th that the article, the the way it's being reported here, you can even get a line. Where is it? Uh. Cooper said surveillance cameras spotted a man and a woman the afternoon of December 8th in the parking lot of the shopping center. He said the pair watched another woman as she shopped in the Apple store and then began carrying merchandise that she had bought to the car, making several trips. She bought so many iPhones, she had to make several trips. Is it, is it Maybe she's a reseller? I mean, Apple doesn't like that. I can tell you from personal experience, I've been trying to buy a lot of iPhones at times. Guy like me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have reasons obvious reasons yeah. they don't make it easy it used to be at least it was two iphones per credit card and id was necessary because it's yeah. it's a hot fraud item right i remember i had cash one time because i was trying to up the ante it's actually part of a longer story about a trip to new york and then chicago i can't tell you the whole thing it's i was trying to do some things oh, get okay. some things done great stories I can't get into it today. No. One day I'm going to get into it. Today we don't get into it. But here's the craziest part, all right? Apple themselves suggested it's not uncommon for customers to make such large purchases from the Apple store, especially because Apple released the new iPhone 11 a few months ago. <laughs> okay, wait. So Apple didn't no say Hang on, hang on, hang on. Cooper said that, not Apple. Who's Cooper? Hold on, let's just be clear on this. Co Cooper is the sergeant. So the sergeant says, yeah, that's not the unusual part. The sergeant says, yeah, yeah, yeah. big purchase. 
115,000. I don't know. Something's got to come out about this story. Uh, they're looking for anyone who has tips to call the police in that region. You see the original article. iPhone 11 starts at 699 US. We're talking about at least 115 iPhones inside of this vehicle that were left unattended. Now, let me ask you something, Willie Do. You're out. You're at the mall. You just, you're, you just happen to pick up 115 iPhones. You're just on a whim because that, you would because Apple recently launched yeah, the iPhone it's, 11. It's a Tuesday. Why not? <laughs> because it's not uncommon because Apple just released the iPhone 11. So it's not uncommon to buy 115. You throw those 115 in your car. Are you thinking, that's good. Click the lock. I'm going to go shopping again. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty ridiculous. You personally, don't 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 you feel nervous if you even leave your laptop in the car? Of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. I'm saying. Yeah, it's uh, something more to the story. I it's, almost feel like there should even maybe an Apple employee. Mm, you know, in, are you, you saying know. inside job? I didn't say it. He said it. Right, because it's not easy to buy $115,000 <laughs> in merchandise without anybody asking questions. Yeah, yeah. Willie Do, you said it, I, I didn't. I feel like there should be a limit. I feel like we're, the world is ready for Detective Willie Do, true, true crime podcast, focusing on uh, stolen, theft. Yeah, stolen iPhones. Stolen iPhones. I'm, I'm curious. I want to see that. I want to watch that. Okay, speaking of theft, you heard about these porch pirate types. They go... And they steal off the porch. Kirk's not worried about them in his neighborhood. We talked about it earlier. He's not really worried. Okay. Doesn't affect him. I don't know. He's got a, he must have a nice neighborhood, I guess. Uh, we have a new video that came out this year. V2. I think it's Mark Rober. He, he does always does the glitter bomb to the porch pirate. I actually like this one. Mm. This is because this one's really practical. <laughs> Colorado mom lets porch pirates take out her trash with decoy packages, and she says they deserve it. Mm. So, you know, you got to bring your trash out to the corner. <laughs> yeah. You got to bring your trash out to the corner. Yeah. Maybe yeah. it's cold out. I don't know. There's slush and snow. Mm -hmm. I mean, there would be maybe in Colorado even. Mm -hmm. And you say to yourself, ah, I got to take the trash out. I got a couple of Amazon boxes here, you know. Yeah. yeah. So she says to herself, look, I had 10 consecutive packages stolen, including her daughter's medication for diabetes. Ooh. Now it's personal. That's rude. Yeah. What you doing? You stealing the medication now? You yeah. know what I don't get about these guys? Okay, you want to steal some stuff. Crack the box. Two seconds, box cutter. Crack the box. See if it's, I don't know, if you got a gadget or something. Am I telling people how to steal now? I, I mean, don't obviously don't do it in the first place. But you got the diabetes medication. Now it's going to take another three days to get there. Yeah. It's just it's useless to you. Like there's no secondary market for diabetes medication. You can five bucks for that. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe they looked at it. Maybe they did, and they saw the pill ball, and they thought, well, I don't know. Maybe this is good stuff I can sell. I don't know. Or use. Maybe they got diabetes. You know. <laughs> <laughs> The off chance. That they, uh, <laughs> oh my god! Get diabetes medicine. Oh my god! Diabetic porch pirates. It's a whole. It's a hot new. It's a hot new trend. It's a craze. I, I don't, oh my god! No, obviously, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm just. I'm just throwing it out there. Crack the box. I, it could be a lot of things. Maybe it's a teddy bear, and you say, "I don't need the teddy bear. The teddy bears for them." I. I don't know. It's not like one theft is better than the other theft, but I'm just saying I feel like a lot of stuff probably ends up in the garbage anyway. It's useless to the person stealing it. Mm -hmm. But anyway, this lady does something great. She takes the Amazon boxes and <laughs> fills them with her own trash and effectively gets the porch pirates to take her garbage out for her because they just take the whole box. They put on a passenger seat. They roll up. They put on a passenger seat. They think they got a major Amazon score. It's all taped up. It's taped up nice. They see the label. They, oh, we did it again. And then they go crack the box. It's disgusting. They crack the box. It's like a food scratch in there. <laughs> it smells like spoiled milk. Yeah, everything's spoiled in there. It's rotting. You put the most rotten stuff in there as well. 
I don't know. I liked it. I thought I thought it's kind of one of those karma moments. I think that's why those videos do really well. Uh, that's rubbing it in a little bit. Me three u zero stop stealing, and you won't be cleaning, dealing with, and that's a an expletive, crossed out. Yeah. I don't know if you have to do all that. I don't know what the right move is. It's unfortunate this stuff has to take place, but it appears it takes place. That's the way it goes. What you're gonna do? But this is kind of a funny one. You take the garbage out. Um, of course, we've seen the glitter bomb as well. There's many many ways to deal with this. Also. Uh, the pirates could leave the porches alone. Mm -hmm. I think this attack might be personal. Oh. Like, it's like, oh, hey, you know, like, I took out your garbage. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not funny. And then... Oh, now, now you're really... They're upset. Yeah. It's escalating. Yeah. yeah, it's possible. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I, you want to do. I probably wouldn't do this. I don't know what I'm going to do if this is me. Get a camera. And then Does the camera doesn't I, solve it though? That's true. They all still do it. They yeah. I don't know. I don't know what you're supposed to do. I guess, I guess you have to stop letting Amazon drop the packages. You have to sign for it, and then it makes it such a hassle for you because you have to go and pick it up elsewhere or something. Yeah. Although sometimes I feel like uh, they drop the package off to your neighbor. Oh okay. Home. Maybe that works. Oh, you know what? There was a company trying to market lock boxes. Box. Yeah. With a combo. And then the package goes in there. So maybe there's a way there's a way to do it, but it all depends how big of a problem this turns into or remains. We have to wait and see. But as people you know, people are ordering things online, you gotta assume you're gonna see more of this kind of back and forth. Mm. New Xbox came out. Uh Series X, although it's probably not gonna be called that. I don't know. I saw rumors it's just gonna be called Xbox. Which is weird because if they don't call it Series X, then they already had one other working title. They had the Scarlet thing. Then you go Series X, and then the eventual product drops the series. Could it be Xbox X? Is it just going to be called Xbox? Either way, uh, we learned a little bit about it. Obviously, it's going, going to be powerful, more powerful than the current generation, as it would be and as you'd expect. You told me that it's going to support ray tracing, which has people all juiced up. They're juiced to the gills, as they say. They're fired right up. Uh, it's going to be able to support 4K60. We already knew a lot of this stuff. Potentially up to 8K. Not really known at the moment. They got the launch video with the old school narrator, uh, which is being used in so many commercials these this day and age. Mm. And uh, we're probably getting a copyright strike for that right now. Oh. Too late. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it looks good. World premiere. The other thing, the topic that's got a lot of people talking is the form factor of the thing. Yep. It's a rectangle, a monolithic rectangle looking device that sits upright, taller than your typical console. Now, we've of course seen upright consoles. For a while, Sony tried to tell you you should put it upright, though I never saw an actual PlayStation upright. Maybe a PS2. Back in those days, those people put those upright from time to time. But after that, the upright nature kind of got a bad rap, particularly with optical spinning media. People would just flatten it. I remember right. with with various uh, consoles, that would be the case. Also, just your typical furniture you have in the living room, not necessarily accommodating for the upright thing. Now, granted... This particular Xbox, the new one, the form factor they showed off, is, is actually kind of smaller than you might think looking at it, standalone. And there's a cool video, a size comparison video that someone put together, or rendered together themselves, and placed the new Xbox Series X up against other popular consoles, PCs, AV boxes, so you could get an idea of how big or small it actually is. You can see it's kind of reminiscent of the Mac Pro, the old Mac Pro. The, now, the old Mac Pro was a cylinder. This, of course, is a rectangle. But there's, there's some shared DNA there in the sense that Microsoft is telling you they figured out a better cooling strategy in the upright form factor. Apple told us that once. And then they backed off of it uh. with the previous generation Mac Pro. And now they're back to a more typical form factor. And there, there's your best comparison. It's about as tall as the current generation PlayStation standing upright. 
And the square portion, the depth and width of the device is similar to a GameCube, if anybody remembers a GameCube. So it's not as big as it looks at first glance once you see it stacked against the other ones. Now, granted, the official dimensions have not been released. This individual had to take the images that did exist in the universe and then look at relationships. So there's a picture that Microsoft put out with the controller, for example. So now he's got to do the... You're impressed. Yeah. He's got to do all that. Mm -hmm. He spent two days doing that. Yeah, I can imagine that. So, you know... Good effort. I mean, show the guy a little appreciation. Puts it up against the Xbox One S, One X, PS4 Pro, and Nintendo Switch even, to give you a better idea. When you can see when it's lying down on its side, it actually has a similar form factor to a docked Switch from a height perspective. Also, the width of it, and you might have missed this in the video, maybe you have to go back to the beginning, or when he pans over it. Look, it, it's, about as, it's about as wide as an iPhone as well. So essentially what... He's this guy's trying to say, and I suppose what uh, the takeaway is is that even though it might look large and intimidating because it's upright, it's probably not as big as you think it is because you're seeing it in isolation instead of against other devices. I still think a lot of people are going to place it on its side, unfortunately, and you kind of lose the vibe of it just based on how furniture is set up and all the rest of it. What do you think about it? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of predictable. You mean the design or design? The design. It's hard, man. What are you going to do? You're going to put out the same box every year? You can't do it. Yeah. But that that being said, there's kind of a reason the form factor has been what it is and has co continually succeeded to, to a certain degree, whether it's PlayStation or Xbox. Sony, on the other hand, they show it to you upright so it feels cool and futuristic, but then they fully it's like they're fully aware you're going to lay it down. Mm-hmm as a typical AV device. So I'm a bit split. I think in a modern situation, if you have the, the right furniture, I don't want to see people put it on the floor. If yeah. they had to put it beside their console, because for whatever reason, the shelf depth doesn't allow for it. And then you're going to see a lot of next gen Xbox is just sitting on the floor. Mm -hmm. But if you have a modern kind of setup, minimal modern setup, and this is your one AV device, and you're able to place it on top of your console, it could be cool. It could be a cool minimal look and it kind of, it's very futuristic. It's reminiscent of, it's just a very simple lines. It's a, it's a it's monolith. A, yeah, it's a monolith. It's a block. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that speaks to me. Yeah. Price wise, speculation puts it around 500 bucks. They showed off a couple of uh, upcoming graphics, potentially titles, other exciting things. Uh, the latency stuff, they say it's going to have auto low latency mode and dynamic latency input. So a lot of people are going to be excited to test out what that actually means in 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 the real world, as they say. But you, uh, I presume we're going to see a number of improvements with this device, whether or not the design happens to be polarizing. You remember we, we were talking about how Apple was going to make the Mac Pro or is making assembling the Mac Pro in Texas and Trump was was very happy about it and Tim was very happy about it and Texas was very happy about it in Austin and they're marching around the factory and and uh, made in the USA. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not I'm not trying to take anything away from that. That's cool. Whatever. Like that's you can't say that about a lot of things. So good on you. But it turns out, and this was, some people speculated this would be the case. It turns out, if you're not in the U.S. buying the Mac Pro, yeah, that Mac Pro, that Mac Pro never saw Texas in its life. If you're not in the U.S. in the first place. So, uh, some users that ordered Mac Pros in Europe immediately started checking out the label to figure out where theirs came from. And sure enough, assembled in China is stamped on the bottom of those ones. So... How does the volume map out? I'm not really sure. Like how many Mac Pro sales, what portion of Mac Pro sales are destined for the U.S. versus other markets? Presumably Canada. You would you you, you could get a Texas Mac Pro if you want one, Will. You could. That, or, I that. should put one right over here beside the DVLA. It would fit. Yeah. Just right over here. Yeah. No monitor. It's just a statue. With the wheels. With the $400 wheels on it. I could do that. And the Pro Display... 
XDR. Because my eyeballs deserve HDR. You didn't know that about me. No. Thinking about it for years. Um... So I guess this is a bit of a downer for those that were hoping that it was going to be more widespread. Obviously, if you were exporting American assembled Mac Pros, the footprint and potential job creation would be far more significant because now you're uh, you're talking about the, the global supply relying on that particular assembly facility. Mm -hmm. How much does it matter? It's a relatively low volume product for Apple comparative. It's not like an iPhone or something. So it was always probably more of a symbol. Yes, I know real people are assembling these and they have those jobs. But when you're talking about something at the scale of Apple, it was always going to be more of a symbol. So I don't think this really matters that much. Uh, this customer was in France, by the way, the one who received the Chinese Mac Pro, Chinese assembled Mac Pro. So we can take our own guesses at the discrepancy in volume, like how many Mac Pros are destined for other places. But I could just guess maybe 25 to 30 percent of Mac Pros are in the U.S., maybe 50 I don't know. I'm just throwing numbers yeah. out there. But I'm not taking anything away. I just think some people had higher hopes for exactly what the potential that was, uh, the potential that existed mm -hmm. for an actual computer product made by Apple in the U.S. being exported to the rest of the globe. Mm -hmm. If you live elsewhere, that ain't you. Uh, speaking of Apple, staying on Apple for a second, I don't know if you knew this, Will, but unlike the Mac Pro... Apple AirPods Pro are a major, major big shipper. That's a that's a big dipper. It is. Surprisingly. Well, not surprisingly. Just for the price. Always had a problem with that. What? The big dipper. You have beef with the big dipper? Yeah. Why? Just why? Just, I mean, it's just hanging out. No, I know. No, I know. No, no. Mostly the dipping part. It's big. The big and little is fine. It's mostly the dipping part. It looks like a frying pan. Why? Did, why was it a dipper, not a frying pan? I want it to be the big frying pan. <laughs> I mean, I don't care that much. I just. I remember, oh, look, you can see the Big Dipper. And what? why Why is it a dipper? Who's who? When's the last time you used a dipper, Will? Uh, not lately. I mean, what even? I'm assuming a dipper is what? Gold Rush? You dip it and... I'm like when you, had to draw water from the ground. you draw water. You dip it. You dip it. Ladle. ladle. The big ladle. ladle. See, that? that's no good either. I don't want a big ladle. I don't want a big dipper. It could have been a big spoon, uh, a big frying pan. I would be fine with. Can you just give me a? De can you define dipper for us real quick? I know we got a hot story here, but just real quick. Dipper, a short-tailed, long songbird. It's a Whoa. ladle. Hang on. Then the first one is a songbird. So there, that's a problem on its own. That it's also a songbird, a ladle or a scoop. All right, fine. A, a big dipper can be the big dipper. I don't care. Well, I don't care. I just want to look at the sky one day and say, there's the big frying pan. Yeah. That would be the day. But it doesn't, it, it's too, the depth is too much for a frying pan now that I look at it. It's more of a small pot. With a really long hand. It's more of a dipper. <laughs> <laughs> It's more of a big dipper as far as I'm concerned. So you go full circle on okay. that. AirPods Pro are very popular. You can't buy them. You want to buy them, you can't buy them. I never thought, I don't know why. I just, maybe, maybe I thought it, but seeing it happen. I remember when we first started talking about fully wireless earbuds. And thinking, man, that's a ways off. They're too expensive. Is everybody really prepared to spend $200 on headphones? People are complaining about spending $700 on, on a phone. How many people are prepared to spend $200 on headphones? Like, that was a real... You want to know how many, Will? I got a number here for you. Hope you're ready. 
I hope you're sitting down. I am. Don't you hate when people say that? Are you sitting down? Hey, how's it going? Are you sitting down? Yeah. Then they give you the terrible news. And you're like, oh, and you're oh. Apple is expected to ship 65 million AirPods in 2019 and potentially 85 million to 90 million in 2020. Ah, wow. uh, what? Ninety bit, ninety million, ninety million in twenty twenty, sixty five million in twenty nineteen. You don't buy these things every year, okay? That's one hundred and fifty million people. Okay, you got three hundred million in the U.S. Number one market. Why do people love AirPods so much? That's a lot of radiation floating around. <laughs> you think they're that's what that's what it is? They're loving the radiation. Well, just saying. Uh the pro model that just came out is so popular you can't buy it anywhere. And it's being marked up on eBay. I didn't even know this because we had them sitting here for a while now. Huh. People are charging $100 above retail price on eBay so others can get it in time for Christmas. Wow. Because you can't find it anywhere. Apple's been sold out forever. A few other retailers have been able to hold on to some stock. Verizon says they can get you a pair near Christmas, shortly after Christmas. If you get it from AT&T and T-Mobile, they're, they're sold out. You can't get it from them. Verizon's website will ship it on the 27th of December, they say. Amazon was doing a $10 discount, but that's over. They're out of stock. You actually can't get AirPods Pro, even if you want to, this holiday season. So that's your hot, that's your hot gift. That's the gift of 2019 for Christmas. There have been other, you remember Tickle Me Elmo? Yeah. Turbo Man. Was remember he the this? He was the hot gift. Yeah, with uh, Arnold. I remembered it was a hot gift. Uh, my dad and I had to go pick up for my sister. It was some type of a horse. It was like a it was like a large horse that would move its head. And we had to go pick that up for my sister. Oh. Some dude was reselling it and marked up the price mm. to like double, as you would. Yeah. Supply and demand. I didn't. I wasn't mad about it. We shook hands. Okay. We said, there you have it, brother. Well done. See if you can find a, oh, Hatchimal was a thing. See if you can find this horse real quick. <laughs> uh. Do, 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 uh, ro robot horse moves head. <laughs> it's dangerous. No, 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 no. Way bigger and furry. It was furry. I mean, it had fur on it. Is it a pony? It might. It's a pony, maybe. Is it this? No, no. It doesn't have wheels like that, does it? No, it doesn't have... Oh, it looked more like those ones over there. No, 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 no. And maybe it talked, or it definitely had sound effects, and it, it moved its head back and forth like this. You know, eventually what happened... I'll tell you eventually what happened... I mean, it looked like that, but it was way cooler because it, it, it moved around. It swung its head. You know, I know what was crazy about that. After my sister grew up and stopped using it, my dad used it to scare geese off the lawn. Oh. You will put it out there and... and like a scarecrow. Like in a big... He, yeah. this, he has a big yard over there. <laughs> it's just swinging its head. And the geese would right. approach because they would want to dominate the lawn, yeah. and they, which they will, by the way, to be clear. So he put that out there, and the geese would approach him and swing its head because it was motion activated <laughs> and battery operated. And they would book it when they saw that, yeah. as you would if you were a goose in 2019. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it no, it wasn't, but. I'm just saying geese have different things to worry about in 2019 than they ever would have in the past, like robotic horse heads. That was not on the radar in 1942. They yeah. would just get shot, I guess, in 1942. So maybe it's better off. It's, I think it's better for a goose in 2019, come to think of it. I mean, but they got to deal with a lot of air traffic, planes and things. 
signals, cell phone signals, Jeff Bezos. They got to deal with Jeff Bezos. Yeah. Uh, anyway, AirPods Pro, you can't get them for the holidays. You might have to pay a premium. Out of stock everywhere. Best Buy, Walmart, Target, Amazon, Apple, obviously. And it turns out 150 million people have these things. So I apologize to the world. Everyone's wearing headphones now. And they're fully wireless. So they don't care about you anymore. Those people. Those people are not no longer interested in the real world. They are connected to AirPods Pro, noise canceling. They're not available to you anymore. Well, you don't, don't talk to people. They got their AirPods on. Yeah. You understand? I talked. No, they're not that. available. Yeah. Speaking of that, uh, Real Me. You know Real Me? Mm -hmm. You ever heard of Real Me? Real Me is just crushing India. They 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 put a product out in India, it sells out. Yeah. They they're so focused on value and volume, volume and value. Look at that. In the meantime, we're talking about Apple at two bills, moving AirPods Pro like it's going like hotcakes. When's the last time you had a hotcake? It's been a while. And Realme, meanwhile, in India, is they're saying, well, we'll give you the AirPod for $56, our version of it, for $56 with wireless charging and USB Type-C. And it's going to work with, I mean, it obviously works over Bluetooth 5, but the a lot of the advantages of the AirPods don't exist on Android when it comes to the connectivity and special features and things like that, so... You might be paying a premium for no reason if your intention is to use it on Android. Anyways, Android provides you with other options. Now, as you scroll down, you're going to see, obviously, the design is very similar. If it ain't broke, don't fix it type of mentality, except for the fact that they appear to be yellow. These are also going to support uh, low latency audio relay, Bluetooth 5.0, as I said before, and they have a chip in them called R1 chip because of real me, you see? Mm. Apple's got the W chip. Yeah. They got the R chip. What, you think you're the only one that can have a chip? Yeah. I'll get a chip. Guess what they're called? Bud's Air. Bud's Air. Wow. Which is, which is just a, re, it's a, con, a reconfiguration of Air Bud. I see it. Yeah. Do you know who Air Bud is? Air Bud, the, the dog, right? Oh, I got you there. You were gone for a minute. <laughs> Where were you, Will? You went somewhere. I was thinking about the dog. No, you weren't. Yeah. You're lying. It was back in the day. Air Bud? What does he do? It was like a movie or something. Yeah, what does Air Bud do? <laughs> does he play basketball? Or yeah. All right, Will. You redeem, right. you redeem yourself. <laughs> On with the story. You, re you redeem yourself there. Air Bud is a dog who shoots hoops and wins championships for high school <laughs> high school basketball teams. There he is. Yeah, that's Air Bud. Come on, Will. Yeah, come on, Will. You got to... Oh, he plays other sports. So anyway, you see the configuration there is Air Bud. So if you're a real me, you flip them. You take the Bud, you put it at the left side, and you take the Air, you put it at the right side. I see. That's how it works. And then you have Bud's Air. They should they should get Air Bud for the campaign. Mm. For the ad campaign. Wearing Bud's Air. Yeah, why not? They come in a couple different colors. Black, white, yellow, as is evidence here. They're going to include touch controls and the ability to summon Google Assistant with your voice, which is very nice. Each Bud can last for three hours on a single charge and 17 hours worth of juice with the charge case available. Uh, there's going to be flash sales, and they're going to be sold exclusively on Flipkart in India, which is like Amazon, competitive with Amazon. I have to assume these are going to be wildly popular in India, uh, mostly an Android ecosystem there to begin with. So the AirPods, it's first of all the cost, and then also the lack of special functionality on Android devices. $56, these things are going to be everywhere. They're going to sell out. 
Um, they already did one, the first flash sale, and then they've got another one scheduled for December 23rd. So keep an eye out for Bud's Air if you're in India. Okay, last one for me. Coca-Cola is launching their own subscription service. You didn't see that coming. Well, why would you? They're being innovative. We talked about them a couple times now. They had the lightsabers. They're doing their own sparkling beverage, unsweetened, the AHA, I think it's called, which we also talked about, to compete against the various sparkling waters that are out there now, LaCroix and uh, Perrier and all the rest of them. That's a growing part of the market. I'm sure you know that, Will. Mm -hmm. So now they, they want to innovate further, and they say, how about we do a $10 a month subscription service? for all of our most innovative experimental products. So you pay 10 bucks a month and you get a box that shows up at your door and all of a sudden you might have the coffee Coke uh. and you might have a new flavor of the AHA beverage and you might have a lightsaber in there. Mm. Probably not the lightsaber part, but you get their, their cutting edge, what they would consider to be their innovative products. They say you will get an exclusive first taste of 20 plus new beverages which may or may not make it to market. I really want, I kind of want to try the coffee one, personally. Now, it's like some sort of an exclusive subscription service because it sounds like it's open to a thousand people, which is not massive. That definitely ain't no Netflix numbers. But I presume maybe there's a feedback element where if you get a thousand, you got a hundred thousand. If you got a thousand, you got a million. You like that math? What yeah. I mean to say is if you get a big enough pool, chances are the data you could extract from that data likely what other people's tastes are gonna be. Mm -hmm. you can get a pretty it's a pretty good sample size. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to say. Well, if I do a poll on YouTube, for example, I'll notice after five thousand votes, it just it's locked. It's gonna stay whatever you got after the first five thousand votes. Is what it is. Yeah. Now, granted, demographics matter, regional stuff matters still, but generally speaking, you can get a good idea. So maybe there's some sort of a trade-off as far as that goes. You want to take a guess how many beverages Coca-Cola has across 200 countries? How many how many different drinks do you think Coca-Cola has? Uh, maybe 50. How about 3,900? Oh, good. 3,900. Imagine running that company. Go for it. Uh, what do you got? Lime, banana Coke? Give it a shot. Uh, Why not? Uh, yeah, because they own a lot of other, be uh, you know, a lot of people, you don't even realize, you see other brands that are underneath the Coke heading, yeah. Coca-Cola heading. So anyway, I think it's kind of interesting, these ideas... Uh, they had some success with some kind of strange flavors in certain markets. They had a cinnamon Coke that did well. Obviously, I talked about the coffee Coke, which I couldn't get, but people were, t I think a dude in Malaysia was like, I'll send it to you. He sent me a, uh, was it Malaysia? Could have been Singapore. I don't remember. He said, I'll, 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 I'll give you, a, I'll send you a couple, which was nice. Didn't take him up on it, but I'm sure I'm going to try it one day. Yeah. So... It's kind of, I like this idea of the customer being involved in the process mm -hmm. and getting some early access. It's kind of cool. So I think it's an interesting program, but it's not going to be mass market. If you only got a thousand people in the scope of Coke's business, that ain't nothing, a thousand people. No. So if you want to be an insider, go check it out. I'm going to be honest. I drink, I don't drink, you know, I drink, uh, I drink the sparkling water. You do. Oh, I go through it. That's uh, that's what you're made of. It's there and then it's gone. Yeah. It's in my house and then it's not. So, I don't know what to tell you. It's in my house and then it's not. Yeah, very literal. It's uh. It goes somewhere. Is it, is it called seltzer? You can call it seltzer if you like. Oh. You're free to do so. But I don't see a huge variation between the different brands. Some people get mad at me. They say, I can only drink this one. Yeah. I can only, and I, to me, 
interchangeable. Indifferent. Yeah. So I'll try theirs. They have the AHA one. So that's the next okay. Coke, Coke product that I'm probably most interested in. But anyway, there it is. We saw it all. We said it all. We saw it all because that's what we do. We had the garbage to the porch pirates. Uh, we had the uh, the very bizarre Detective Will Do moment. Uh, we had the Cybertruck not for Europe. I don't know. Europeans tell me, are you interested in the Cybertruck? Tell the truth. If you're in Europe right now, are you even in the market? Do you even care? Do you want side mirrors? Or are you, you have nowhere to put this thing? Let me know. Xbox Monolith is on its way. That's what they should have called it. The Xbox Monolith. Then I would have bought 10. But as of right now, it's Series X, but that probably won't be the final name. If you buy a Mac Pro and you're not in the U.S. or Canada, guess what? It never touched Texas. No Austin barbecue in that, baby. No. Realme is out to, to, to take some Apple shine with the Air Buds. It's the Buds Air. You're supposed to correct me on that, Will. Air Bud. Basketball playing dogs. Yeah. Coca-Cola subscription service. We covered it all, like I said. There's nothing else. There's no more news today. If anyone tells you otherwise, they're lying. CNN doesn't exist.